happiness. What is it? How to get it? Where to find it? <laughs> That's true. Those are good questions. Can we bottle it? And sell it. <laughs> bottle it, sell it, and live off of it. What is happiness? Happiness is the most innocent form of yourself. Oh. Happiness is... It takes you out of your everyday things. Out of your everyday busy life as an adult. Happiness is that innocent, childlike feeling that it doesn't matter what it's around you as long as you have what your happiness is. The world is just spinning. Cotton candy, like we said in the previous episode. Cotton candy. A mouthful of cotton candy. My happiness is chicken wings. I love like chicken wings. You get a crunch with a little bit of soft, with some flavor. <laughs> Some ranch. I think that's what we're getting for lunch. For chicken wings, I'm down. I love <laughs> chicken wings. But happiness. This one is a huge topic for me. It can't be bought. No. It can only be experienced. Mm -hmm. it, it almost feels like it, it's it's from the heart. It's a feeling. Mm -hmm. It really is. I feel like happiness for me is something that each and every person needs to know about. Mm. Yes. I went through a very rough time where I was married for five years. I kept it on the down low. My parents didn't know until the divorce papers came through. Oh, really? Um, yeah. So a lot of people didn't know because I didn't know that I was doing the right thing. The first year was great. I mean, the most amazing time I've ever had. I knew him for six months and then I said, you're my best friend. I love you and I want to marry you. And he said, let's do it. So we went and got married. A year later, things started getting a little rough. Wow. I stopped doing everything that made me happy. And I started becoming almost conformed to him. Oh, you want to go out and drink? Let's do it. Oh, you want to go out and travel to here? Let's do it. Oh, you want to go to Amsterdam again for the fourth weekend in a row? It's like I lost my happiness. I struggled with myself. I didn't know what to do. So then two years later goes by. I'm still miserable. Another year goes by. I'm miserable. Uh -huh. The last year goes by and I separated from him. I decided to move back into my house and he had to go back to where he came from. I said, I don't care where you go, I'm done. I'm not doing it anymore. And slowly but surely, the pain went away and the happiness shined through because I was doing what I was meant to do. Well, you were denying yourself, it sounds like. I don't know if I was denying myself. It's almost as if I was trying to become one of... Well, isn't that self-obliteration when you begin to conform yourself to somebody else's concept true. of you? That is true. It was like you were dying. It felt like a struggle. Like a destruction of yourself. And marrying can be a happy thing. Oh, well, it is. I've been married for quite some time. With the right person. How many? Don't I don't even right know person. how many years I've been married. What did he say yesterday? 12, 13? 13, 13 I don't years, know. I do believe. <laughs> Marriage can be a an expression of happiness, but it is not the source of happiness. I think Absolutely. we need to recognize that. You know, there's... Happiness is an expression. It's a feeling. It, mm -hmm. it is, but we cannot get happiness from anything. This camera that's filming us. You can buy a brand new, look at this iPhone camera, a freaking awesome camera. Mm -hmm. For a moment, you can feel the novelty. But will it bring you lasting happiness? No. Especially if you don't use it in a good way. Happiness was described to me once by my grandmother in Germany. Happiness is something that you can't touch. Oh, Grandma, that's some good wisdom right there. She always told me, because I was like, Grandma, you know what makes me happy? She said, what? And I said, candy. <laughs> she said, happiness is something you can't touch. Happiness is a feeling from within. Yes. You can't physically reach through your chest and grab within, through your skin. So she <laughs> told me, she said, happiness is something you can't touch. You can just feel it. Mm. So by riding horses for me, that was happiness. By walking the dog. That was happiness because it was a feeling I felt in that moment with these objects, with these little souls. 
But it was a connection between us. It was a kinetic energy between us. That made me happy. It was like setting the... Remember in the last episode, when the last episode we talked about setting the turtle free. Mm-hmm. That's a big one. Remember remember in the yard when we let it crawl around in the yard and, and I said... And I was asking it, do you want to be set free? And it kept saying no. And we were very confused by that. And I go, wait a minute, let's change the word. Do you, do you want to be released? Mm-hmm. And I said, yes. And I was like, oh, how fascinating, because if you think about it from the turtle's point of view, I know this is a weird conversation, but from the turtle's point of view, if the turtle already feels free, you cannot set it free. It's already free. It's already free. The turtle has been free. You just temporarily helped her get back on her toes to be ready to lay those eggs. And so with that, we ask, if you are already happy, if, if we were all truly born happy, mm-hmm. even considering horrible experiences that we've all been through, if our truest nature is happiness, the question is, will I let myself be happy? It's a good one. Because I feel like a lot of the times, we stab ourselves in the foot. Because <laughs> it's not about finding happiness. It's about being happy. Will I let myself? This is the question. If you're watching so this. Is... Remember I said to you when we first started talking, you said, you know, my partner is doing this or, you know, Mm -hmm. and I said, can you allow yourself to feel happy even though this person's behaving that way? We put a condition to our happiness. We put a condition to our state of being. I can't be happy if this person is being abusive. I can't be happy if I don't have so much money. I can't be happy if my children don't behave the way I want them to. I can't be happy if the world is... You know, if you're a vegan, everybody stops eating meat. If you're, you know, an environmentalist, everybody stops driving, you know, CO2 car, whatever. We cannot, we must not put conditions to our happiness. You can't. You shouldn't. There is no, life doesn't give you a condition to happiness. It's us setting our own tone of saying, well, today I'm going to be happy if I eat one chicken wing. I'm going to be happy if I eat 12. <laughs> and then I'm going to be happy when there's leftovers. And then, uh, But it's not the chicken wing that makes me happy. It's the feeling of depleting my hunger. It's the feeling of knowing I dip my chicken wing and not my <laughs> It's that kinetic feeling. That's the biggest thing is happiness. It just cannot be seen. I mean, I can't grab Leslie and say I'm happy. She doesn't... She is not my... So worse than happiness. Yeah, and I can't depend on her for happiness. Right. We had conversations about this all the time. I was married for five years. Walking into a new relationship is like, what do I do? I feel like Urkel. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I feel like Urkel. I'm awkward. I don't know what to do. I'm like, I don't know how to act. I don't know how to feel. I don't know. It's weird. It's a feeling like you're like, oh my God, oh my God, what's going on? But... When I let go of all that, and we are just doing our normal day-to-day thing, I'm the most happy because it's not even I have to grab him and say, oh my gosh, babe, I'm so happy that you're here. It's just the surrounding. It's that tightness of a feeling. It's that love of a feeling. It's that glowing of a feeling. You'll just feel that happiness. If you're riding horses and that's what you want to do, I don't care what level you're at, and you are just up there, you feel this... I always think of it as this warmth in my body. You too. I feel like you are. Happiness is a warmth that just surges from head to toe, head to toe, head to toe. And when I ride horses, I feel that from the tip of my toes to the top of my head. And it just balances back and forth. And that's how I know I'm genuinely happy. Well, you're, feel, you're filled. You fill yourself. Mm-hmm. You're fulfilled. Mm-hmm. Happiness is the fulfillment of self. Mm-hmm. And once you get to that, once you get to know yourself and how and what you want to do, where you want to be, and how you set the stones to get there, there's no better feeling. Yeah. Someone can't look at you one day and say, you're going to be happy tomorrow. I feel it. No, because they don't feel what you feel. Their happiness isn't the same as your happiness. Your happiness cannot depend on somebody else. Your happiness is my favorite word, independent. Your happiness is just enlightenment, self-awareness, surrounding. It is everything we talked about previously. Yeah. It is all tied into one. 
Your happiness is learning to acknowledge and let go. Your happiness is just checking the people that are around you. Is there somebody dragging me down or not? Well, am I allowing that person to drag me down? I think people who have been married or in any kind of relationship or in, even in a family, I can remember growing up, I would not let myself feel at peace unless my parents were not fighting. Oh, that was all the time. So then I never felt at peace. I was constantly on edge. And it had to get to a point where I realized, because my kids would fight each other. Oh, my God. It, like, triggered me. And I thought, oh, my God, it reminds me of my mom and dad, cats and dogs. And then, and then I heard a still, small voice say, you can be happy and you can be at peace even if they're bickering. That's their way of, of communicating to each other. Absolutely. And they'll learn better ways. The little kids now, that's the only way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they bicker. And once I accepted that, that I can be happy even though X, Y, and Z, even though the economy is blah, 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 even if I don't have a job, even if blah, 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 I can still be happy and therefore I am at the source of the change in my life, then you start to feel different. 110%. Situations start to change. People come and they go. It's a big one that I'm learning. That's a big one I'm learning. People come and go. Things happen for a reason. I mean, we cannot define ourselves based on anything else except for ourselves. That's a huge thing. The definition <laughs> doesn't say... Look at your person next to you. <laughs> I can't say I'm going to define myself based off of Leslie. I can't say I'm going to define myself based on my partner. You have to dig deep to the source of gold inside yourself and say, what is in that cauldron? Mm, I love that what visual. is that image that makes me completely happy and ready to face the world? For me, it always takes me back to a horseshoe. Oh. Horses are my center of being balanced. It's not another person. It's not another thing. It is simply a symbol that says, Daniel, get on a horse and your mind is completely free. That is me. That is when I am at the height of my best self and I'm ready to take on the world because I'm very empathetic. I feel emotions. I can walk into a store and a baby will be crying and I feel like I need to cry. The way you walked past the dog the other day and felt that I had a boo-boo leg. And you yeah. Like, you were like, it says help. <laughs> it's like, bum, I'm bummed out. When my partner's sad, I'm sad. You and feel then, the sadness. Yeah, you I become feel, aware of yes. it. But it, does not, it is not a definition of you. Yeah, and the only way to get past these things is to find your thing that makes you happy. Whether it be drawing, whether it be going on a run, driving your car, hiking, taking the dog out, anything like that, that's what you have to find. Because I have drugged myself down many times with other people's emotions, other people's feelings, other people's <laughs> hecticness. I mean, I really feel, and when I feel somebody else's emotion, I start questioning myself and I start questioning the people that are closest to me. It's a weird thing, but the one thing that keeps me balanced is my horses and everybody needs to find that. That is a piece of self-awareness that is so important, which leads to happiness. Do what you do and what you love to do and just keep that in your circle because once you do that, you have friends who will stick around. I mean, I know multi-million dollar horse trainers and my friend circle dropped and dropped and dropped and dropped when I was riding for these people because nobody believed in me or people didn't like horses or whatever. That's fine because what came out of that was the genuine Daniel, the one who found himself, the one who was confident, ready to face the world regardless of what other people think. And then I was like, you know what? I'm building even better friends in the horse community. Mm -hmm. And people who believed in you. Mm -hmm. You know what's weird? It's when I looked in my cauldron, I saw a piece of lace. Just a simple piece of lace from like back in the day, you know, like the edge of the, you mm -hmm. know, you put lacing, I don't know, like on a doily or something. Mm -hmm. And for some odd reason, for me, that represents sponta spontaneity, creativity. It reminds me of the women in my life, like my Aunt Faye, my, my Lola, um, and my mom. And it represents, you know, that, that with a simple piece of lace, you can make something beautiful. Mm -hmm. And with simple, simple things you can make something amazing and 
that for me inspires creativity within me, all these other aspects of myself. And I think like if you watching this can look inside your little cauldron of happiness, what would you see in there? What would that symbolize for you? For Daniel, it was a horseshoe. For me, it was a simple piece of lace. You might have something else, maybe four leaf clover, maybe a thimble, like a monopoly thimble. It doesn't really matter what it is. But the question is, is what does it mean to me? And it's a good activity to start on because happiness does come from within. Happiness is your truest nature. And you don't have to live your life conditionally happy regardless of circumstance, regardless of other people's feelings, regardless of other people's opinions or um, what other people believe. And you can find that within yourself and you can just be that happiness. And, and the final thought I will say is that, you know, happiness isn't a point of arrival. Happiness is the way. Mm -hmm. And you are the way and go on your way. And I felt empowered because it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter where you are, what you come from. Independence is something, again, like happiness, you can't touch. I just touch. feel like don't depend on anybody for anything because you can achieve what you want. You can be independent. There is no greater feeling in the world than being independent. But to condition your happiness upon this person's happiness or success in any given moment is actually robbing yourself of your own creative power.